Hey guys, it's Craig, and thanks for joining us for another tutorial. Today, I'm super excited to show you how to create this online store website that you can see on your screen and mine, because I think it could be our best online store yet. And I call it Fun Beach Store. We learned a lot making a delicious coffee shop in 2015 and a comfy animal store in 2016. There's me way back then. But this year, we're gonna step it up even further bringing in a special guest who's a successful online store owner himself to help us get real sales. So we're here to talk about creating an amazing website like fatherfigure.co, um, e-commerce website, an online store. I know a lot of you guys out there are interested in setting those kind of websites up. So we're here to help and hopefully inspire the future online store owners out there. Um, so Andrew, uh, take it away. Let's, let's hear about fatherfigure.co. Yeah, so the name of the company is Father Figure. Uh, I came up with it about a year and a half ago, right. and it's the first lifestyle brand for dads. Okay, so the, the first product um, is uh, Burp Rag. So this is a 100% organic, really soft muslin cotton burp rag. You can see it's bandana print. Awesome. What's the day-to-day -day like to keep the, the business running and to make sure that sales keep coming in and that you're, you know, you're keeping up with the Amazons and the Jack Threads and stuff like that. The what? Never heard of that company. <clears throat> Amazon. I, I think I said like it the, kind of funny. Is like it the, the Rainforest? <laughs> yeah, is it rainforest.com? <laughs> this year is all about getting real results for you and your business. This is e-commerce made easier for beginners, and I hope you stick with us. If you like what you see so far and you want to walk away with your own completed website like this, then stay tuned. Welcome everyone, and you should know from the start that you can make any sort of website you want today. This could be a website about fashion or fitness or fine art, but we'll see how to make this exact website from start to finish. What is WooCommerce? Well, it's kind of a funny name, but it's also the best e-commerce platform for WordPress. WooCommerce is the industry leading software to convert your normal website into an e-commerce website. It's free to use, and it's got plenty of other amazing stats too, like over 26 million downloads. It's capable of being used in hundreds of different languages, can be easily connected with all of our favorite third-party software like Facebook, MailChimp, and PayPal. And when you get a chance, make sure to check out the WooCommerce Showcase to see some amazing sites on the web powered by WooCommerce. Sites that you and I can make too. The way we'll make your WordPress website is the recommended way, which means that you don't need to know anything about coding or technology to use this tutorial. You can be a complete beginner and leave here with your own finished product of a website. And I can quickly prove to you that our website isn't just built by a mumble jumble of code. If we click login in the upper right, we can easily get to the back end, as they call it, of our website, which is probably the scariest term we'll hear today. Now we can click to our home page, and let's say we wanted to make a basic change, like edit our image slider right here where it says bring a friend. We could just hover at the top and click edit with UX builder. And now literally all we need to do is just click on the text where we want to edit it. And then we can click open text editor. And you'll get this Microsoft Word-esque little screen right here where you can say, write, and virtually do whatever you want. Let's click OK, and our changes will be made right here. On our previewing screen, we just need to click Apply and Update to make those changes live for the world. And believe me, making further edits are just as easy. And I'm going to revert back to our original slider now because I think that's what we had on the YouTube thumbnail. And those thumbnails are often pretty important for selling people on the site. Speaking of selling, let's walk through a real sale so you can see just how easy it is for your customers. Someone could click shop now in your large slider, or maybe they'll click on one of the products on your homepage. After they check it out a little bit and decide they want it, they'll click add to cart. And now in the upper right, someone has the option to either view cart or check out, just like on Amazon. Let's view cart. At this point, someone can confirm that they want one of your items or maybe increase the quantity. 
and when a customer is ready to buy it, they'll click proceed to checkout. On the checkout screen, it's time for someone to enter in their billing details on the left, which I've already done. And someone can also enter a coupon code that you'll give them through your promotional efforts. With these perfectly outlined steps on this perfectly organized checkout page on your own online store, it's clear now that someone has to choose how they want to buy the product, direct bank transfer, check payments, cash on delivery, and credit and debit card will be activated by default. And we're going to use PayPal to process your credit and debit card transactions because everyone's heard of PayPal and it's free to put this on your website. So the customer clicks proceed to PayPal. Now your customer can either log into PayPal and pay with a PayPal balance, or they can choose pay with debit or credit card, which is more common. Now your customer can fill in their debit or credit card information, which I'll just blur out so none of you decide to go on a shopping spree. And then at the bottom, your customer can just click pay now. Processing. And voila, we've just paid $2 to our online store. In other words, you made money. We can leave this comforting PayPal screen open if we want and go ahead and check out our email for confirmation on that payment. And at the top, you'll see payment received from me. So that's all really cool and simple. And then we can go to our PayPal and we can see that money that actually arrived. So let's log into PayPal. And we can see we have a new PayPal balance. It's not a ton, it's pretty humble, but it is a balance nonetheless from a real sale. And if we click into the details from that sale, it says payment received. We can click to open them. And now we can read that we earned $1.64 because the captain shirt was bought for $44.50 and we used a coupon of $42.50. So hopefully your customers wouldn't have that aggressive of coupons. But in any case, the purchase total was $2. We got a nice transaction ID. And if you're wondering why we didn't get that entire $2, it's because even though PayPal buttons are free to put on your website, which makes them a big advantage, PayPal takes a small fee from the sale. As Google explains to us, there's no fee to use PayPal to purchase goods or services. However, if you receive money for those goods or services, such as from selling an item like we are, the fee for each transaction is 2.9% plus 30 cents US dollars of the amount you receive. In our case, that's 30 cents plus an additional six cents. And that six cents is just 2.9% of $2. So that's how it works. And hopefully if you're making sales of like $100, then the uh, fee would just be 30 cents plus um, $2.90 or something, you know, so if you're making a sale for $100, you'd only get $3 and change taken out of that sale. And you can actually build up a lot of income from your sales. So that's how it works. Honestly, the e-commerce features will make like these pop-out images, the sale buttons, the sizes, and so on and so forth run really easily. And it's not very hard building the site as you'll see. What's tough and lacking in other videos you'll see online today is the real how behind selling online. How do we convince customers to actually click buy? No one's telling us that. Which is why I brought in our special guest because he's already made sales online to real people many times. Andrew quit his job at Google to work from home, completed a huge Kickstart campaign, and runs a growing blog of his own. So he's pretty legit. Use my interview segments with him as inspiration or just as breaks, whatever you like. They're not an advertisement and it didn't pay me. I just wanted real advice for you guys so you'll leave with a complete understanding of how to build an online store from the ground up. All right, so let's begin. Open up the link to our blog post guide in the notes below your YouTube video and everyone will get to this page right here on my blog, dearblogger.org. So welcome. What we have here is some uh, reading for your enjoyment, stuff about Andrew from fatherfigure.co and his story. So we're gonna hear from Andrew in a little bit. You can also read more here about why we're making this online store and what it will include. However, we'll see all that as we make it. 
So if you're anything like me, you're probably excited to get building and create our fun beach store. So if you're anything like me, you probably want to get started. Let's do it. You'll have this reading here at any time to come back and get through. And it won't be private either because once I release it to you and the whole web, then everyone can enjoy it. So let's come down and let's look at the introduction. All right, let's learn the steps and costs. The first step we need to do is the domain name. All right, so that's just like yourbusinessname.com or yourname.com. Facebook's domain name is facebook.com. My domain name on this blog is just dearblogger.org. Let me know if you have questions. Choosing a domain name, it should be a lot of fun. There's no negative impact in how well you rank in Google if you choose one or the other, but most people think of the .com. It's the most recognizable. So when they hear your business, they're probably going to want to visit yourbusiness.com. All right. So the domain name costs $15 a year. And an analogy I like is that it's like the address of your website, just like our homes, our apartments have addresses. Once you have your domain name, you're going to get some hosting. And the hosting is just some space on the internet to host all of your content, all of your blog posts and videos and images and logo icons. And the products we're going to put up need to be hosted somewhere. So we're going to get that. And if you don't have hosting, people visit your domain name and they just see blank white space. All right, so it doesn't work. The hosting costs $10 a month. All right. A good analogy for your hosting is that it's like a plot of land where we're going to build an amazing, huge, beautiful home for your new blog or website. So the domain name is your address. The hosting is the plot of land. So that's our analogy. And because of that, we're going to take a lot of care in registering your domain name and your hosting. Next, once we have our domain name and hosting, we can install WordPress. Despite what you might have heard, WordPress is free. It's the WordPress.org software. And it's the exact same thing that other online stores use that are powered by WordPress and the same thing that huge celebrities and Fortune 500 brands like Time, Jay-Z, Katy Perry, Forbes, Snoop Dogg, New York Times, Walt Disney, all these brands use. So I think we're going to love it. Not that hard to figure out either. Once we have WordPress, we're going to install the theme. So the theme is just like a total makeover for your website. It's the entire look. And I've picked out a theme called Flatsome, which just so happens to be the number one most popular e-commerce theme at the moment, all right? And that's gonna cost us $59 to use Flatsome. That said, this is an optional cost because there are other good free themes that you can sell from using WordPress and using the software that we're gonna have today. So if you'd rather go with the free theme, you absolutely can. You can in fact just do steps one, two, and three and get set up and then try out a free theme. I could recommend you one. All right, once we have the theme installed, we're gonna install WooCommerce. WooCommerce is the number one e-commerce platform that everyone who runs an online store uses and it's free to install. So that part blows me away. I'm very thankful that that's free. Uh, once we have WooCommerce, we're going to create your online store. It's time for the fun stuff. We're going to learn how to set up a complete website. In terms of the price, we have a discount coupon you can use called Big Bonus. That's the coupon. Um, that will work on your domain name and your hosting. And that'll make it under $20 to set up your website, which I think is amazing. So just watch the video, follow each step, and all this will be yours. With all that said, we're going to scroll down to our first section and now it's time to start building. So what do we need? Well, now we know the steps and the costs and all we need to get started is a computer, a high speed internet connection um, or a decent speed internet connection. My internet can be pretty crappy and your credit card handy to pay the basic costs of a domain name and hosting. So if you're ready, I'm of course ready. I've been sitting here for hours. Let's get started. Let's get the setup and the minimal tech work done, and then we can install WordPress and start creating your online store and making your project come to life. All right, so to register your domain and hosting, the first step is to visit HostGator.com. And the good news is we can get both of these two things at HostGator, all right? So in the olden days, you had to like hunt them down and connect a bunch of wires in your living room. But nowadays, we can just visit HostGator.com and get them both, all right? So let's do it. You can just click on this link I gave you right here, just so we don't have to type it in. 
All right, welcome to HostGator, guys. So just a quick backstory. I've tried many, many other web hosts for different client websites and different blogs I've created. And for so long, I felt confused and like it was too techy for me to handle, too expensive, you name it. And then I realized it was just them. So after my long journey, I found HostGator and I've been with them ever since. I now host almost 90% of my online content at HostGator. I'm super happy, of course. Their tools are very modern, advanced, and secure. You can see all sorts of different options like the cloud plan to use as you grow in WordPress. And I guarantee you'll be really happy to be hosting in such a fun and friendly neighborhood that is HostGator. They also have great services for e-commerce users like us like secure monitoring of your website 24 7 365 of course even when you're away from the computer and they make it easy to set up this secure ssl padlock icon you see in the upper left right here that way when you accept credit card payments users know that all their data is 100 percent safe and encrypted and you can grow your business without worry lastly there's my favorite feature which is the live chat button in the upper left this one has always been here for us and whenever you need to ask any questions about your website or your hosting, just click on this and you can chat with a real person in this cute little AOL instant messenger type of window for as long as you want about anything, hosting, websites, or of course, WordPress related because they're experts on WordPress too. But for now, I just wanna focus on the plan I got on day one at HostGator. It's the cheapest plan they have here and I still use it because it's just been that good to me and that can be found when you click on web hosting. So let's go ahead and get that plan. All right, so now you'll see three boxes and three plans. We have the hatchling plan and then one step up is the baby plan and then another step up is the business plan. The business plan is ideal for high traffic and e-commerce sites as they say here, but I would only buy it if you're playing on a corporate budget with a corporate card. Of course, it's good for e-commerce sites, but for us small business owners and people on a budget, you can do all the e-commerce and wordpress.org setup stuff just fine on the baby or the hatchling. For example, I can't imagine us needing that free phone service, but again, you never know. It's good to consider all three. The difference between the hatchling and the baby plan, the only big difference is that the baby plan lets you run unlimited domains. So if you want to manage your website, your friend's website, your business website, and the website for the taco joint down the street, so on and so forth, you might consider the baby plan. And I should be 100% honest, I did upgrade from a hatchling plan to a baby plan, which I run now. And you can do that at any time, just ask live chat. So for now, we want the cheapest option, and that's why we're gonna get you a hatchling plan. And to proceed, we can just click the Sign Up Now button. Once you click Sign Up Now, we'll be in the HostGator order form. You're in the right place, great job so far. And in the first step, it's time to choose a domain. So what I've done is I've actually laid out each of these six steps here for you right here, where it says you are now in the HostGator order form, good job. That means that all you need to do guys is just walk through from one, two, three, four, five, six, and the techie stuff will be almost done. And these written steps will also help you if you want to pause the video and go through them on your own, or maybe even skip forward in the video once you're done, because I know that I can talk a lot and sometimes you'd rather just do it on your own. All right. In any case, let's move forward and let's do step one, enter a domain name or choose a domain. And in our case, we could register a new domain, but I want to check I already own this domain because I already bought a domain name to use in this tutorial. It's just make a WordPress website.com. All right, and when you click away, it's going to see if your domain name can be registered. And so in this case, it says good work added primary. This tab right here is what we check, by the way, if we bought a domain name from a different registrar, like at GoDaddy, for example. So this is the route you'd go, and that's actually what I did. I like getting my domain names right away sometimes, um, so it's a really good process. But if you did the register a new domain, it'll actually search if that domain name's available for you, and in this case, it's not, because I already own it. So either way, HostGator's an excellent domain name registrar. If you need a domain name, and we're gonna get a discount on it when we check out, um, but if you already bought one, that's fine, then you won't have to pay anything for the domain name. So once we've accomplished step one, let's scroll down 
And by the way, if you do the register your new domain name, make sure to uncheck the domain privacy protection. So I'll show you that. Just this little box right here, you're gonna wanna make sure to uncheck that because we don't think that's necessary. It's an extra cost. All right, so let's scroll down to step two and now we're gonna choose a hosting plan. This part's extremely easy. Just make sure your package type says hatchling or maybe baby if you wanted that instead. For a billing cycle, you can choose whatever you want. It's up to you. My first order at HostGator was for 12 months because I didn't want to have to think about hosting and I wanted to give my new website a chance at success. And I thought I needed 12 months and I, you know, I did. Um, but you could also choose one month, three months. It's totally up to you. So today we're actually just going to choose one month so we can keep our costs down. And then we're gonna choose a username, not very important at all, and a security pin. All right, and now we're gonna scroll down. It's time to enter our billing info, so just pop that in just like you would any other purchase, like at Amazon, Apple, you know, Airbnb, uh, TripAdvisor, wherever you shop, and come on down once you've done that. In step four, it's time to uncheck additional services, just like the um, upgrading of your hosting plan, you can upgrade these services at any time. Um, but we're on a budget, people, so I don't think we need those right now. And now is a really important step. In step five, you can enter a coupon code. So we can see that the coupon code that HostGator gives us, free upgrade three, doesn't work on one month. It actually uh, only works if we go up to choose a hosting plan and select a larger billing cycle and then we get some nice percentages off. Um, but I have a coupon for you that will work on any billing cycle, so it's pretty cool. Uh, just delete what's in here and write in big bonus like that, and it doesn't even matter if the capitalizing isn't there, I don't think, and then click validate. And what that'll do is get you exactly 50% off your hosting, which is an awesome deal just to save 50% on anything is a good deal so there you go and like I said that'll work on whatever period you register for so guys keep in mind that um, when you register hosting if you get a longer period like 36 months then in the long run you'll pay less money the coupon only works for your first billing period your billing cycle rather which you get to choose so if you want to pay the least per month 36 is the best possible deal and it's looking really good and I've also written out for you some really common totals that you'll see so that you know the numbers add up I had to call HostGator like four times when I made my first order and totally bug them because I wanted to make sure I wasn't paying a cent more than I had to so I want to make sure the same goes for you here's some possible price scenarios and uh, now that we're ready I'm gonna proceed and check this box for the terms of service and so on and now it's time to click check out now together. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's do it. Let's order some hosting and a domain name if you need it. Congratulations and welcome to the HostGator family. When you see this screen, it's now time to check our inboxes. It's okay. It's okay. It's, it's okay. okay. Sounds like you want the dot com. No, I'm happy with the dot com. I think it's trendy. Yeah, I think I think it is too. Yeah, feel yeah. good about it. I, I want to test you there. Okay. Yeah, it's it's definitely cool. It's brief and it's like it's like half of cool. It's just like cool. <laughs> it's cool. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It's not. Like, ask me. Ask me what website my company is. <laughs> what website is your company? Yeah, we're five figure dot cool. <laughs> that doesn't work. So here we are back in our blog post guide, which we've kind of neglected for a little bit. I think it's feeling lonely. And we closed that HostGator window that said, welcome to the HostGator family. It's okay though. Everyone does that. We all close it. And I'm going to show you now how to proceed and log into HostGator, where we're going to do the next most important step, which is install WordPress. All right. But for now, just congratulations. You set up your domain name and hosting. HostGator's taking care of that for you. All right. So like the techie stuff is 50% done. Great job. Let's now scroll down in our guide and let's come to where it says install WordPress. And now let's hop over to your email inbox. So here I am in my email 
And you're going to want to look out for two very important emails. These are those type of automatic emails that you want to save forever. All right. Don't delete them. And the first one we're going to want to open is from billing, good old billing. So we open up billings email and it's going to say, thank you for your order with HostGator or something along those lines. And what we want to do now is click on the HostGator billing portal link. All right, and now we can just log in with those credentials HostGator gave us in the email from HostGator. And click login to the HostGator customer portal. So here we are on the newest HostGator customer portal screen. If you see this screen, you want to click install WordPress right here to proceed and install your own copy of WordPress. HostGator is never satisfied with their looks and that's why they're always modifying them to give us WordPress web designers the best possible experience. It's really great. Thanks HostGator. But of course, our job now isn't to admire HostGator's designs. It's to proceed and install WordPress and maybe we'll come back later. So if you see this screen, just click install WordPress right here. And if you wanted to get to your cPanel, you could click right here instead. But we're going to click install WordPress. Great job. Now we can proceed. Now, if however you see this screen, then unfortunately you're not modern enough to get HostGator's new customer portal layout. Just kidding, it's actually pretty cool if you got this screen because you get to use the older layout that's been featured in all of our beloved videos. And of course, you'll eventually see that new HostGator look soon. So if you get this HostGator landing page to proceed and install WordPress, just click hosting up here at the top. Next, just scroll down a little bit and click where it says get started with WordPress today. And this will take you to the exact same screen as before. And we just need to enter in our basic information. All right, we're getting close now, guys and gals. All you need to do on this screen is just select your domain name for installation. So just click on this drop down menu and pick your domain name, which you either registered at HostGator or you told them you registered somewhere else. So here's mine right here. And you're gonna leave this directory box completely blank. And for years when I would install WordPress, I would see this section below that said, let a pro do it for you recommended. And I would always think, we're not gonna fall for that, that's crazy. But then I realized that some of you actually do want someone to do it for you or don't understand the steps right now, or maybe in 10 minutes, you don't understand how to build the WordPress website and what we're doing inside WordPress. I get it. Sometimes us WordPress people think that steps that we think are easy are easy for everyone, and they're simply just not that easy. So I brought in a developer, an in-house developer named John, who will actually log into your WordPress site and make changes for you if any steps in the videos don't make sense, or if you just wanna make some custom edits that you thought up on your own, John can help out and do that, or he can even make little instructions for you on how to do it yourself. So I think that's a lot better deal than this, but I just was reminded by this section that we have someone who can personally help you out as a quote unquote pro. And of course, I'll be there to supervise all the changes as well if you guys do that. So if you need that sort of service, just email John, J-O-N without the H at dearblogger.org and let them know what you're thinking. All right, so that said, remember to leave this box blank and click next. Now we can just enter in our blog title, which is easy. Admin user is easy too, but just make this professional because when you write WordPress blog posts, it'll say by whatever you put in here. And then you got your name, last name, tough to spell, and your admin email where WordPress will send your login details. So double check that one. Now all you need to do is just check this box here and now it's time to get your coding skills out. You're gonna have to know JavaScript, PHP, HTMLs, asynchronous, C++, C, and all that. Just kidding, you don't have to know any of that because HostGator is gonna do the rest of the techie stuff for us and install WordPress onto your domain name and hosting. So if you're ready, I'm ready. All we need to do to proceed is just click the install button right here. Let's do it. So good job, WordPress is installing. We'll give it a couple more seconds. 
and it says installation complete. So great job, don't touch anything. Come back to our blog post guide and it's gonna say WordPress will do its thing. No coding needed, blah, blah, blah. All right, so next, leave this screen open. I'm following my own steps here. If you close it, then the sky will fall and wait for about an hour until your WordPress site will start working. All right, so that means that WordPress will take some time to settle into place. HostGator is setting everything up for you and what you don't wanna do is click on this link right here because that'll get rid of the screen. All right, so what we do wanna do actually is follow the next steps, all right? And where it says while you're waiting, we're gonna complete these steps. It's time to check on your name servers. What is a name server? Well, a name server, let me tell you, is used to connect your domain name and hosting. You get two of them, and they're located in your other HostGator email from no reply. Okay, so we'll go back to our email. This is just something to learn, and this is a necessary step while we're waiting for WordPress to get installed. Let's go back, and let's open the no reply email you should get. If you don't, contact HostGator Live Chat. They'll be more than happy to help you. All right, open that up. And now we're gonna see our two name servers. So what we're gonna do is right click, copy them, and then open up a blank text file and just paste them in. And we're gonna take them and put them in the right place now. Then in your HostGator customer portal, click domains, click on the gear, and make sure your name servers match those in your no reply email. So I have a picture of that here for you outlining the steps we need to do if you got your domain name at HostGator. And that is to come back to the customer portal and click domains, and then find the domain that you registered, click on the gear. And now where it says name servers, you wanna make sure that these two match the name servers from the no reply email. Pretty easy, you just need to click change and then enter in name server one and name server two, exactly as they appear, appear in your no reply email. All right, or you can just copy them in. And it's nice that we have them in our text file because you could just go ahead and copy the whole thing. Make sure to get the letters too. And paste them over. And then do the same thing for your second name server. and then save name servers and you'll be good to go. And this step again is outlined right here on this little pop-out image and I'll probably put in a few more of those for you guys just to help out along the way. Domains, gear, name servers, save. If however you registered your domain name somewhere else like GoDaddy for example, you're gonna need to log in and enter your no reply email name servers over there. All right, so what that would look like is you'd go to GoDaddy, you click sign in, or you click on your name, and then once you're logged in, you wanna come over to manage my domains. Okay, once you're here, just find the domain that you're working with, click the blue link to open it, scroll down and click on manage DNS, and then scroll down and where it says name servers, you're gonna to wanna to change these. All right, so you just click change, select custom, and then enter in your name servers from HostGator. And what that'll do is that'll connect your domain name with your hosting, all right, as we said before. All right, so once you're done with your name server step, great job. You've learned so much about WordPress, domains, hosting, and now even name servers. All right, so you can take a break, you're free to go. But before you do that, why don't we change our password right here in the marketplace window that's still open, hopefully, or the sky's gonna fall. We're just gonna click on my installs in the upper right to change our password. And now we're gonna come down and find your new domain name and click reset password. Then just choose yourself and write in a new password. All right, and click update. Click it again to make sure it worked and we're in good shape. 
All right, so now we can leave this window open. I'm gonna go outside and go for a hike and grab some lunch. And then I recommend you do the same, by the way. Then we're gonna come back and have a ton of fun creating our WordPress website. All right, see you soon. I think as new website owners and bloggers, sometimes we're not sure what to say. Do we say we run a business, run a website, um, manage a blog? What What is the like, you know, do you say you run a fashion company? What's your version of what you do when you're talking to people? It really depends on who the audience is. If I'm talking with other designers, then I talk about you know, starting a fashion brand is because that's the thing that relates the most to their experience and that's right. the conversation that I'm looking to have. In general, if I just meet randomly somebody in a bar, I don't go to a lot of bars anymore since I'm a dad. But yeah. if I, hypothetically, I'm at a bar, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I say I, I run a lifestyle brand for dads. And, uh, and so it, I've it's, seen you in a couple. <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's a unique way to start, so people are usually curious about what that means, and I talk about um, yep. you know, all the, the three things I mentioned already that we do, uh, clothing, gear, and community, and also that we have an online store, okay. colorfigure.co. So that's usually how I describe it. All right, welcome back everyone from your breaks. I had a lot of fun outside. I hope you did too. The sun is shining and the birds are chirping and it's time to proceed and log into WordPress for our first time. We can also see that our second section, the web design, is complete and ready now by the power of editing. So this tutorial grows with you guys but in either case, you're now a web developer, or at least a WordPress web developer, if you completed the first section, the web development, and you set up your domain hosting and WordPress. Um, once you learn a little code, you can call yourself a full web dev, but we don't need any of that for now. Let's begin again, and let's log into WordPress, where we're then gonna create our website, we're gonna install our new theme, and we're also gonna look at some free themes if you want, and then we're gonna um, create the backbone for our site so we can put all sorts of, all sorts of content in. In any case, um, if you kept the link right here to the cPanel marketplace, you're in good shape. What we can do is just scroll down to our website. You'll probably just have one. And we're going to click on the link that says admin login right here, this blue link. All right, and as our direction says, it says to log into your new website, use the link from cPanel Marketplace, which is what we just did. And this is the standard WordPress login screen that everyone sees that uses WordPress, like Time, Jay-Z, Forbes, Katy Perry, Beyonce. Everyone sees this same screen, although you can customize it and like put your face there or your logo if you want. And so if you did leave this page right here, if you deleted it, we could just X out to simulate that, then you can always just visit yoursite.com forward slash WP dash admin. So we could get to this page by visiting make it WordPress website.com forward slash WP dash admin. And you just replace this part with your domain name, then put in the forward slash WP dash admin and hit enter. So that's how I log into my WordPress sites and blogs every time because we don't have that cPanel page most of the time. And if you didn't change your password with us before or you don't have it for whatever reason, that's fine. You can just visit this screen right here we were just at and click lost your password and then write in your email and click get new password and WordPress will email you the steps to set it up. Really easy. For now, let's bookmark our login screen just bookmark it so that we can get to it easy in the future. And now let's go ahead and log in. All right, so drum roll and welcome to WordPress. What we're gonna do now is use the guide, but I'm also just gonna show you some little steps to kind of clean up WordPress and make sure that we're all on the same page, literally. So we're gonna get rid of just some basic notifications. We're gonna click, I don't need help because you have me. And then we're gonna get rid of the WordPress experts at your fingertips thing. We're not gonna fall for that and pay 49 a month. We don't want that guy. And then we're gonna get rid of the notification. We're just gonna close that notification and keep it simple and keep it simple. All right, but we can keep the welcome to WordPress cause that's kinda cool. 
and don't pay attention to the Google Analytics settings right now. Either. We can do that later on. So what we're looking at now is your dashboard. This is where you make edits to your WordPress site, and it's also called your back end. Your dashboard is your back end. So if we want to get to the front end of your site, um, in other words, how people will see it when you tell them to visit it and check out your work, we can just click in the upper left corner where you see this home icon, and then it's the name of your site also. So you can click here where my little Super Mario hand is, or you can click visit site, and it's the same thing. All right, so our site looks pretty cool. We have the miniature cactus right here. I actually have a couple of those right now. And uh, make sure not to water them too much though. And then our site displays the beautiful WordPress 2017 theme created by the WordPress team. So it's one of the finest. It's got the parallax image, which we're gonna learn how to create on our own. And if you wanna go off and create a website with this 2017 theme, by all means, go ahead. Um, I know a lot of people have been successful doing that. All right, so you have a pretty good start here. And a professional web developer, by the way, would probably charge you just $200 to $500 to create this site for you with a basic WordPress install and the default theme. So we're already doing great and saving a lot of money. All right, but so even though our site looks great, a lot of different people run this theme and I want your site to be unique and customized and not just great, but really great. So we're gonna change everything up, of course, and let's start doing that right now. To get back to your dashboard, just click on that same button in the upper left, or you can click dashboard, same thing. All right, here we go. And we can also close our inbox and close the HostGator page. Just a quick tour of your site, if you wanted to write a blog post right away, you'd click posts and go to posts. This is where people write blog posts and start blogging. If you wanted to make a page, like a contact page, you click pages. These are the similar structure as posts. They just go in different places on your site. So that's pretty cool. And if you wanted to make basic changes, like change Fun Beach Store, that name, you click Settings. And then you can change the name Fun Beach Store right here, like Fun Beach Store 2017. And that will change. And then when you save it at the bottom, it'll change on the front end of your site too. We can also change the tagline here and just call this one like just another online store WordPress website to be complete and click save. All right, so by doing that, you can make your first basic changes to your website. If you wanna add the www to your domain name, you can add that in WordPress address. Just make sure to also add it in site address and make sure these two lines are identical. All right, otherwise things will break. But we like keeping it simple. We're gonna go without the www and it will automatically redirect to this shorter URL as it is now. All right, great job. If you wanna change your password from within here, you can do that too. Click users and now just click on yourself. So there's me. And in this section, you can change your password by scrolling down and clicking where it says new password. Just click generate password. It'll give you something really crazy, and if you want the strong one, go for it. Or if you want to write your own password in, then go for it too. And click update profile. But for now, I like our password of new password one. You can also change the layout if you prefer a different color scheme. So it's pretty cool. And some other settings, which we just don't have time for right now, but have fun playing around in your new copy of WordPress.org. So given that our site looks like this right now, and there's that change we just made, by the way, added online store, good work. Given that our site looks like this and it's pretty basic, why don't we go ahead and change everything right away? Because people will start visiting us and we want them to see something amazing. So come back to your dashboard, click in the upper left. And we're going to use our guide now. We're going to install our theme. So we just logged in and now we're going to install theme. All right. So to get started with your themes, hover on appearance and click themes. And now you can see the active theme. You can click it to open it, read about it. You can also activate one of the other default themes your WordPress came with like 2015. You just click activate at the bottom. Pretty simple. If you click on the huge plus on the right, we can add new themes. And right away, WordPress recommends us with featured themes, 
So I've used responsive. We can click popular. So popular is a better place to start. I've definitely worked with many of these themes. We had a huge tutorial on Sydney, for example, um, you know, a few months ago, and so on and so forth. The problem is that as you start looking at more and more themes, um, some of them are not as good and they're harder to work with. Um, so that's why I'm recommending you with a theme that I know that we can make a great website with and you know have it stand out right away from the pack. Then let's follow the guide and let's get Flatsum. So what we're gonna do is buy Flatsum and then download it to your desktop so that you own it and you have it. You can do what you want with it. And then we're gonna upload it to WordPress so that your site can uh, wear that theme and use that look. All right, so to get going, you can click on Flatsum here, or if you'd like, you can click on our Flatsum affiliate link here, which is the same page. Uh, this link will just give us a little credit for referring you. I set up two links for you here so that you can choose to give credit to us or not. Either way, it doesn't matter. Um, and with or without this affiliate link, we'd still use Flatsum. What's important is that you get a great look for your website, all right? Not that we get credit or something like that. Even though uh, I like that, you know, I'm really happy about that. If you give us credit and you use the affiliate link, if you click that, it's Flatsum, pretty cool. And if you click this non-affiliate link, it's also Flatsum. So there you go. All right, so pretty cool, let's proceed. So we can just follow our instructions here and have a look at Flatsum in all its glory. All right, it's really cool. I was like clicking live preview and we're gonna get all these different demo sites. So like if you wanna do the full screen fashion, you can easily set that up with this tutorial. You can put the images in this layout and we're gonna install the demo sites. So you basically get this template, which is just totally amazing or any of the other ones. All right, and then there's a lot of information like this has been sold a ton. Um, you know, blah, 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 compatible with everything, checks off on all the boxes. Really exciting stuff. Um, all right, very good guys. So once you're here, you wanna be on the buy license section and you wanna just buy one regular license, all right? So let's click add to cart for regular license and let's click the green go to checkout button. All right, very good. And I can see I have some uh, Envato credit here. So I'm not going to use that. I'm actually just going to click on the credit card option. And then I'm going to enter in my credit card and the expiration date and the CV code. And then I'm going to click make payment. All right. So that's the exact steps you would follow. And after you click make payment, you're going to get a downloads page with Flatsum ready for you to use. So here I am on my user profile right now. I already downloaded Flatsum before and you can hover on your name in the upper right and click downloads. And you're going to see Flatsum right here. And what we want to do is click on the green button and then we're going to click installable WordPress file only so you know you're installing the right thing to your WordPress. So click that and then click save. And we saw it just come into my computer. All right, and we're also gonna click on license certificate and purchase code and save that because that includes your purchase code, which you'll need to enter in on WordPress to validate your theme and get updates. So now that we're back at our fun beach store, we can click on the upload theme button. So let's click choose file. Mm -hmm. And in our downloads here, we can see the theme file. It's gonna be a really long name but you don't need to rename it or anything. You just need to leave it as is and make sure it's the .zip file. Next, you can click open. And now click install now. And these steps are outlined exactly right here. All right, so your theme was installed successfully and now you just need to click activate. Great job. It's gonna take us right to the setup wizard for Flatsum, which I know can seem like a lot of work, but we wanna go through this now so that our theme looks great and we don't have to worry about any real setup details. So let's click, let's go. And now it's time to enter in our purchase code, which we downloaded earlier. So what I'm gonna do is navigate to my downloads where we can see that .txt file we got from ThemeForest. Double click to open 
and scroll down to item purchase code. Just highlight this long numerical code, copy it, and come back to your WordPress in the setup wizard and paste it. All right, and if you forgot how to do that, you can click here, but we know how to do it because you have me. So now just click activate. And this will give you access to theme updates and support, which is really helpful. All right, your purchase code is valid. Great job. Continue. So that will help us when we want to email the developers at Flatsum with any questions. Now they'll be able to respond to you. Next, click skip this step because the child theme is for more advanced developers, and we're not going to do that right now. <clears throat> Even though you guys are very skillful already. In default plugins, it says this will install the default plugins included with Flatsum. We can always add or remove plugins later on with no negative consequence. So we want to go ahead and do this. This will save us a lot of work later on. Click continue. And through the magic of WordPress, it will automatically install and activate some of the best plugins on the web. Okay, so all your plugins installed perfectly, and now it's time for the content. Let's jump back to our guide, and we can see that we're in the right step right now. We have our theme installed, and we visited the setup wizard, appeared automatically, great, going through all the steps, and then eventually we're going to choose the classic layout. But before we get there, we have to finish the other steps in the setup wizard. All right, so let's install the demo content. This is basically doing all the hard stuff for us, guys. It's just setting up a super powerful website with a few clicks. This ensures that the demo site on Flatsum is actually what you get. So all those demos are actually being basically created on your website right now. So you can use them whenever you want. All right, so we'll check everything here and continue. Again, magic of WordPress doing its thing. And next up is logo and design. So that should be interesting. All right, setup wizard worked perfectly again. If you have a logo already made for your new website, then feel free to use it now. Just click upload new logo and you can replace this default flatsum logo. But we're gonna make ours later on. So we're gonna leave that and come down to select preset. It's kind of tricky to see this, but you can actually scroll to the right and this is where you can check any of the demo layouts. You just select them and then you can continue. And the best option here is to go to the Flatsum demo in your version of uh, Theme Forest, in your Theme Forest account, and then click Live Preview. And then we just want to hover on Demos and you can check out the many different layouts that you get now that you own Flatsum. So you can check out QChop, and maybe you want your site to look like this, or maybe you're gonna change it to this layout next season. You can do that now that you own Flatsum. You really get a ton for your money. We can go back, demos, you can check out full screen fashions, you can make a huge fashion website. I don't know any web designer out there that has this many layouts and themes um, at their fingertips as you guys, so you're like way more powerful than so many other WordPressers right now. I'm going to use the classic shop though, so I'll be the best uh, suited to help you with this first one, which is the classic shop. Um, but choose whichever one your heart desires and make an e-commerce store that rocks. All right. So I can obviously help with all of them, but in this tutorial, we're going to go with classic right now. We're just going to learn the basics and then later on, it's really easy to choose these other ones. All right. So you're not committed. You can always choose the other ones for no additional cost. So let's click continue now. And this is what we're doing where the guy says, uh, choose the classic layout. So we just did that. Keeping it classic. All right, now we're just gonna click agree and continue here to the policies. Pretty simple. Our website is ready, congratulations. All right, so we can log into our WordPress dashboard, which we already did, make changes and modify the default content. So that's why you have me, we're gonna do all that. What we're going to do now is just right click on view your website and I want to open that link in a new tab so we can see what we made. And voila. So our site already looks really cool. And if like your manager or your boss told you to make an e-commerce website for the business and you set up this, he would be like, you made that? Oh my gosh, great job. You're definitely going to be in charge of our website. Or she would be like, wow, how did you make all that? 
and you'd just be like, well, I have my ways. I'm a WordPress web developer. Um, so that's pretty cool. And I wanted us to check out the site and now the structure is working. Uh, we can go ahead and continue with the fun stuff. And you can also choose from your demo layout now and go ahead and grab the uh, different layouts just to prove to you that they're all here. All right, so it's really like Christmas come early, guys. You now have all the Flatsome themes at your fingertips. Let's go back to the setup wizard, and we're going to just go ahead and set up WooCommerce because that'll get that step out of the way. So click the purple setup WooCommerce button. So this is just the setup wizard for WooCommerce. All right, so let's click Let's Go. Shouldn't take longer than five minutes. Probably a lot quicker. All right, and then we're going to set up all the pages. So this is where WooCommerce will give you the basic needs for running an online store. It's going to happen like before you even know it, and it's going to be done, and you'll have an online store. It's really cool. So we're going to get these four pages. That way people can buy from you. They can put things in a cart. They can check out. And customers can also have a My Account page, just like Amazon, where you can edit like your profile information and your billing details. All right, click Continue. Essential pages are good to go. Now just tell the computer where you live and what currency you want to use. So WooCommerce is very international friendly. You can always change this later on. We're going to go with New York, dollars, pounds, and inches, but that's up to you. Click Continue. All right, yes, I'll be shipping physical goods to customers. Continue. And the way we're going to set it up is free shipping for now. So I think that's just kind of a good feature. I know when I'm shopping, free shipping makes me want to come back and buy more. In the payment section, we're going to check everything so that you have all these options. And you can enable PayPal right now just by putting in the correct PayPal email address for you. So this is the email address where I accept PayPal payments. You can also check check payments which will just notify people that they need to write a check for you. Bank transfer payments and cash on delivery, which lets people know that when your delivery guy shows up, they better have some moolah on hand. The easiest option is definitely PayPal Standard. Um, using PayPal Standard lets you accept payments via PayPal. Using someone's PayPal balance or credit card, totally for free. So this is the most traveled route, and again, it lets people pay you via credit card, um, and you don't have to pay anything for running that service. You just pay the standard uh, you know, percentage that goes to PayPal, all right, which is very low, and that one we haven't figured out how to get around, so no big deal. And I'll let you know if we do figure out how to get around any charges, but it'll just be exactly what we saw in the introduction to the video. And click Continue. All right, your story's ready, great job. All right, so we're just gonna say no thanks to the sending information and we're gonna click create your first product. All right, excellent work. So we're gonna create our first product a little bit later on in the tutorial. We wanna get our home page set up first so everything looks good. Um, feel free to dismiss the notifications right here or read them if you'd like. Um, and let's go back to our guide. We're now done with the install theme step. So we're just going to come on down and head to delete plugins. And we've already viewed your site to see the changes. Nice work. And now it's time to just delete plugins. All right. See what our guide says. It says any great site needs a few plugins, which we already installed. So a lot of this is already done, um, including the Facebook login. That should already be done. But let's go ahead and see for ourselves. So in plugins, we get a lot of different notifications at the top. All right, and we're gonna do these later. So we're gonna dismiss, dismiss, dismiss. We don't wanna set up a uh, Braintree or Stripe right now, although we can easily do that later. And let's go ahead and make sure we all have the same plugins ready. All right, so let's just start at the top and delete what we don't need. First off is Accusement. We wanna activate that one, not delete it because it's the WordPress uh, spam protector. It's the best one available. So we're going to get rid of all those notifications in a second. Don't worry. Um, all right, Axmet's good. We're going to keep Contact Form 7 as well. That'll go on your contact page. Google Analytics for WordPress by Monster Insights came default, and uh, we don't want that one. We're going to deactivate that one. 
<clears throat> so we're actually going to use our own version of Google Analytics. Um, we'll just set that one up the manual way. All right, and you can click delete. OK. Next, we'll delete Hello Dolly. Click OK. So all these plugins are free, and you can get them back uh, you know, at no cost to your site. It won't you know, break anything. You can just click Add New at the top and search for them again. Real easy. And if you bought a plugin and uploaded it, and then you decided to delete it later, you just have to find where you downloaded it and bring it back. Next, we're going to deactivate Jetpack by WordPress. Jetpack would let us use features from WordPress.com, but we don't want those. Delete. Done. We can do this quicker by just checking the plugins that we want to deactivate. So let's check Mojo Marketplace. Let's check Optin Monster. Come down. And just those two additional plugins we're going to delete. We're going to keep all the rest of them. So once you have checked Mojo and Optin Monster, come up to Bulk Actions and select Deactivate and then click Apply. Now we can delete them, or you can do a bulk delete, either way. I kind of like zapping them manually. All right, so at this point, your website should have Acismet, Contact Form 7, Next10 Facebook, Next10 Google, Regenerate Thumbnails, WooCommerce, WooCommerce PayPal, WooCommerce Stripe, Woo Sidebars, WP Form Slate, and Yith WooCommerce Wishlist. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 11 plugins activated, and we might add a couple more or delete these later if we don't use them. But for now, if your site looks like mine, we can refresh this page too to get rid of the other bars, then you're good to go. All right, so here's our list for now. Great job. Make sure that your list looks exactly like mine. Let's go back to our guide. And we're now done deleting plugins, all right? So we also completed this step already in the setup wizard for Flatsum. We don't need to visit plugins or add the recommended plugins because we already did that. And what do you know? We've already added WooCommerce, so we've completed this step too. Pretty cool. Although it definitely deserves its own section, um, WooCommerce is phenomenal. So let's come down and let's actually delete pages now. And we're going to get ourselves all the way down to create menus before we take another break. And then after that is the fun stuff. So follow me to Pages now. Click Pages on the left. So this screen lists all the pages available on your WordPress website, and you're super powerful because you have all the demo content that we got from Flatsum. If we scroll down, we can see that our classic shop screen is the front page. So this little front page tag means that the home page, which is the same thing as the front page of your site, displays classic shop. We can click to see what it is. And this is where we'll actually edit the home page of our site from this screen right here. But for now, let's go back to pages and let's see how to delete a page. We can click the right arrow, check out more pages, click right again and check out even more pages. So what we're looking at here are, if we visited our site, we'll open it in a new tab. We're visiting all the pages that are listed in this drop down menu. These are all individual pages, for example, vendor shop. And in pages, these are also pages, obviously. So we want to keep some of these and we want to delete other ones so that our site looks complete and finished and not just like a list of a bunch of demo pages, even though they're a lot of fun. So let's go back to pages and I'll show you how to delete a page. For example, I know that I want to delete the FAQ page. So if you hover on it, you can click trash, and that page will be gone. It's in the trash. Great job. You can also change the title of a page really easily. For example, if you want to change the Contact Us page title, click to open it, and you can change the title right here in this upper bar. Contact Us. Perfect. Then click Update. Now when we visit our site, we can see the two changes we just made. If we click on FAQ, that page doesn't exist because we deleted it. And if we click Contact, you can see that became Contact Us right there in the menu, just in the matter of changing the title right there. All right, so now that you know how to delete pages and modify the titles of pages, let's make sure that our homepage is the right page that we want. 
and establish which page is your home page. All right, so I'm pretty sure this is already set for us, but just to double check, follow me to settings, hover on settings and click on reading. And in this section, we can decide what our front page displays, AKA what our home page displays. So it's set up perfectly. We have a static page selected and that static page for our front page is the classic shop. That's what you want. However, if you change this to something like full screen fashion and save changes, then when you click back to the home page, you can click on the logo to get to your home page. Then you'd automatically have this full screen fashion layout. Way different, equally amazing. If we change that back to classic shop, save changes, refresh the home page, you get the classic shop layout. Change it to sports shop, save changes, refresh the home page. You get the sports shop layout. Easy as pie. Everything looks beautiful. All on your very own online store e-commerce website. All right, so you get the picture. We just want to revert back to classic shop because that's the one that I know how to build and that we're going to learn how to build together. And then we're going to do the post page as blog. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we want and click save changes. All right. So just doing that, we've established which page is your home page and we're breezing right through the guide. All right. Now it's time to make some actual edits to our home page and learn how to actually change the content on the home page. So let's click on the logo to get our site refreshed and get our classic shop back. And what I'm going to show you how to do is just how to remove some of these different sections on the home page. We're of course going to be working with the classic shop layout, but I think it's okay to learn on classic shop because you can definitely revert back to the other demo layouts. If you want, if you want to use any of these other ones, they'll be preserved for you. I think it's good to learn the edits on classic shop though, because it's really basic. And if you ever mess up, you can always just restore the way this page looks right now. All right, so to get started making your first edits on our classic shop, follow me to the top navigation and click edit page. All right, and now we'll click UX Builder, this tab right here. So normal WordPress installs don't come with the UX Builder, but because we're using Flatsum, we get the UX Builder, which is an ultra modern visual editor for your site so that when you make changes, you can just click on some text or an image and remove it or drag it around. And you don't have to look at a screen like this. So a lot of WordPressers don't have the UX builder. They don't get this luxury. So maybe don't tell them for now. Let's click UX builder and let's get started. And it's going to load up our page in this new ultra modern editor screen. All right, there you have it, my friends. So what we can do now is just scroll down and when you click on a section, like if I click on this blue slider on the left, it's going to open up the settings for that slider. So we can easily change the layout. If you want this to be taller, you can see, we just made it taller. So on and so forth. You won't need to edit all these settings, but you can definitely have fun playing around with them. And of course you can always revert back to what they were before. For example, to change the image on the slide, we'd go here and so on and so forth. If we scroll down, we can just click on some text like our blog. We can easily just change that and say like our articles. And because it's a visual editor, what that means is the changes you make in the editing area will show up automatically visually. All right, so that's pretty cool. We can go down even more. And let's say we wanted to remove a section like our categories. We don't want to keep this section for our finished product. So we can just click it and we'll get the product category section. And you can actually delete stuff from within here. We could click on individual ones or move things around. See how I'm dragging it, but we might not be sure where that's going to go. So the best way to delete this section is to click back this upper left arrow. And then you can find the entire product category section and then click on the gear 
and then click delete. It's going to ask us to confirm and we'll click OK and then it's gone. But we kept the title so that's kind of cool. But we want to delete the title so I'm going to click on the gear now for the title and click delete and that would also be right here on title. Click on the gear, click delete, click OK. So as I'm sure you're seeing this list on the left is exactly what's inside our homepage. Each one of these little tabs is shown on our actual site. And if you wanted to rearrange them, you can easily do that. For example, we could move our testimonials up a little bit. So we can see our testimonials are right here in slider. We can drag those up if we wanted and put them right underneath that row. And now they're up at the top right here. All right, super easy. Let's go ahead and try deleting another section to clean up our homepage. And you know what? No, we're actually going to keep all these different sections, these different content blocks, and we're going to use them uh, to our advantage when we actually jump into the next section, which is the fun stuff. All right, so pretty cool. To save the changes you made, just click Update. And again, within each of these different content blocks, there are a ton of fun things to play around with. And so that's how your homepage will work. Let me know, of course, if you have any questions so far but everything can be edited visually right in front of us. Just click on it, you'll get to the right section, and then change up the text. It's that easy. Click Apply and Update. To see the changes we just made, we can open our site in a new window. And there you have it. All right, let's go back to our guide. We now have visited our new homepage by going to Pages Classic Shop before, and we've followed the video guidelines to remove unnecessary rows and content. All right, so your website designing and editing skills are increasing. You're becoming more powerful, and you're learning how to use our new website, creating the backbone for your website, and it's all gonna become really beautiful. Great work. The final step before we can take a break is to create some menus. So let's get that done with right now. We wanna work on our menus right now so that your first visitors to the site don't get to click on other links like these demos. We don't want them to know that our site is loaded up with these awesome demos right now. You wanna just be able to release them to the public and to your customers uh, as you wish. All right, so we don't want people to see that we have those. So what we wanna do is edit the content in our menus. This is a menu on our site where it says demo, shop, pages, blog, elements. This is a menu where it says about us, our stores, blog, so on and so forth. And we wanna just limit the links people can click. All right, so let's go back and let's follow the directions. And I'm gonna actually close this window right here, which is the UX builder, so we don't get confused and click something over here. All right, so let's go back to our dashboard. Hover on appearance and click menus. Great job. Now direct your attention to where it says select a menu to edit. So we can see we've chosen the main menu, but if we click the drop down. We also have the secondary menu, which is the footer menu and the top bar menu. If we choose that and click select, the items in the menu structure right here will change. So these menu items in this menu structure are obviously different than if we selected the main menu. Let's open up our site to see that difference. Now we can see that the secondary menu is clearly up top up here in the top bar as this dark blue bar is called and it's also down below in our footer those are the same menu all right and the menu items right here right next to our logo are the main menu so we want to edit the main menu first make sure you're on the main menu you can rename it right here if you want to call it something different like whatever you want to write but main is good enough for me so what we could do is open up each individual item in the menu structure. To do that, we could click on the arrow, and then to delete it, we could click Remove. And we do want to remove the demo uh, menu items, as I said, so that people can't see our different layouts. You just want to release those seasonally or when you're telling people you've redesigned your website. However, you might guess that removing each one of these could become a little bit cumbersome. And it'd be fun also just to keep this demos list in case you want to, you know, take a look later on just on your own. So what we're going to do is leave this menu structure intact and create a new menu. Click this link. 
Now let's give it a name and we're going to call this one main good version and click create menu. All right, so now we can build our main good version menu from scratch. On the left where it says pages, click on view all and we get the full list of pages. What I want to do is select blog and select our shop. So let's scroll down and find shop. Perfect and go ahead and just add those two to the menu by clicking add to menu. And you can see they'll come in there right there. And what I also want to do is get a home page link so that people can clearly go back to the home page. That's going to be a custom link. So let's click custom links. And for link text just call it home. There you go. Next we want to make this URL area the home page of your site. So let's delete the http colon slash slash and let's go to the home page of your site and copy the domain name. And then come back to menus and paste that in for URL. And lastly, click add to menu. Great job. To reposition a menu tab, just click, hold, and drag, and drop. And we can move our blog to the end as well. To rename a menu item, it's super easy. Just click on the drop down arrow and rename it. All our products looks just about right. We're going to add one more item to our main good version menu, and that's going to be a deals page. So another custom link, deals. Our deals page isn't made yet, so why don't we make it in pages, and then it'll show up in pages. But before we leave this section, make sure to click save menu. All right, now let's go back to pages. Click add new. And let's just make a blank page which will serve as our deals page once we have some deals. Type in deals, leave the rest blank, and click publish. Very good. You've now added our first new page to the website. So we can come back to appearance menus now. And we have our main good version menu selected. We just need to find deals from the recent pages add to menu. Drag it up. Perfect. Our menu won't show up on our home page until we add a display location to the menu, which you guessed it is main menu. Selecting main menu on this new menu we created is going to overwrite the existing menu on our site, which is the other main menu right here. So let's make main good version our main menu and click save menu. Once our site updates, we can refresh the site and watch as our menu changes. There you go, you just created your first custom menu in WordPress, just like a professional web designer would. Let's make another one. Let's go ahead and edit our secondary menu. Click back to menus, choose the secondary menu and click select. Now we want to remove blog, so click the drop down and click remove. And we want to change contact us to just contact. So click on that menu label and delete the us. You can change the menu label and have a different title on the page itself if you want. Meaning you can call the contact page get in touch or something and then when people click it, they'll see a different title because the page itself has a different title, if that makes sense. Close that drop down and save menu. Excellent work. Once our site updates, we can now see that our menus are looking perfect. And in the next section, we'll be ready to drop in some beautiful content to make your website come to life. The last thing I'll show you how to change before we take a break is where it says my account. What if you wanted that to say your account like Amazon? Well, because that doesn't live in the menus area, we actually have to navigate to a different section called customize. So follow me to appearance, customize and click customize. And welcome to a whole new world. And this section are all the settings that your theme developer created for you that they, well, just didn't feel like putting on the main dashboard. And as it turns out, customize is often the main editing area for your website. We can find the My Account link by clicking on it. 
which will actually just bring us to the My Account page, so that won't actually get us editing this title. But to edit that title, we can find it on the left. My mistake. So we can find it in header, and then we can go to the header main, and then we can go to the account area, click account, and we'll see that in this section we actually can't change the title of my account. We can however decide not to show it, or you can change the icon style on it. So that's a neat feature. You can actually show the image of the customer if they have a profile picture set up for them. Let's go with the person with the circle, or oval, and save and publish. So great job learning how to create custom menus for your website and learning how to edit the homepage a little bit. And of course, learning how to do everything we covered in this section right here, including plugins and the theme. If you want to change this My Account menu, you can certainly do so. Just let me know with the question in the comments. I know that the Flatsum developers have created this menu with specific endpoints, specific endpoints that go to the typical places that customers want to go to like orders, for example. But if you want to change this at all to make it more like Amazon or something, or maybe you have your own custom scheme in mind, then I'm happy to help with that. For now, we're definitely overdue for a break. I think it's going to include a nap and a snack. Uh, so let's go ahead and take that right now. And then we'll do the fun stuff. All right, great job, everybody. So now that you know how to make some basic changes to your WordPress site, upload and delete plugins, edit the home page a little bit, and change the menus, stuff like that. We've gone from beginner to intermediate WordPressers, and I think it's now time to edit the home page. So we can click our custom link in the menu to go back home, and we're gonna proceed and we're gonna create your online store home page. So on our guide, we just need to come down to the fun stuff, all right? And if you looked at this before and the fun stuff wasn't here in the video, then that's because you're seeing it in the raw, unfinished form. And now our fun stuff is ready. So what does it say? It says we're gonna do designing the seven pages, including a blog, that will compose your website. We'll start with the homepage. It's the first thing people often see, unless you write like a viral blog post and people see that first. And it feels great to complete, so that's very true. Once we complete our homepage, the whole site is just gonna really pop and you know, wow the, the visitors, like your family, your friends, everyone who shows up. So I should let you know that I've already made this site that we're gonna make, and that one lives at startawordpresswebsite.com. So what I do always with my videos and my demo site is I make everything we're gonna make, and then all we need to do is just uh, replicate it. So I already know all the steps. Um, so I'm going to reference this site occasionally when we need things like the icons or the text or when I'm just not sure you know, how to set it up because this site is perfect. And what you can do is reference the site we're making now, which is going to live at makeawordpresswebsite.com. All right, so when you make your site, this one will be complete. But now that we're just making this site now, I have to reference the previous one, which is right here, just so you know about this site. Pretty cool. If that makes sense, we're going to make all of this stuff right now. All right, so now you know a little secret about how the tutorials work. And we can get going. It says the first step, where's the first step? It says you can now download all images we'll use to make a gorgeous online store come to life. So let's, let's do that. Click on this link right here. It's going to ask you if you want to save the Make an Online Store 2017 images. Save. It's a lot of fun. And you get all these images right now. So it should be a lot easier to put them on our online store website. All right, and the images are going to be in your downloads. So I'm going to open up my Finder. If you're on a Mac, you'll have Finder. If you're on a PC or a Linux, then you'll have a little bit different setup. All we need to do though at the moment is just find our downloads folder and then drag the .zip file from the images to our desktop. It's just a little bit easier to remember where that folder is then. 
we'll go to our desktop and we'll bring the zip over to El Capitan over here right there climbing the mountain and I'm also going to double click this which should create another folder right on top of it which actually contains the images that's how it works all right so now you can actually delete the dot zip and you can open up the folder make it bigger and this folder is filled with all the perfect images to make a gorgeous online store and to make our website just like the demo that I've made for you here today. So I already know that this website has good user experience and it flows and the images work together and I've spent countless hours researching and designing it. So you can replicate the work here or you can just take some of the images and do the rest of it on your own. But this way you know that you at least get a site that looks good that you can show the world or your boss or your friends kind of random images, but it'll all come together. So let's do it. As we look at a bunch of models, rear ends. Sorry to show you those awkward images first. All right, so we're now in our homepage section under the fun stuff. And this section contains the slider. It contains the mission boxes, the browse new arrival section, the featured boxes, and all of that. See, all these headers are a little bit smaller than the homepage header. All right, so this is where we want to be, and we'll start with slider and move downwards. Our guide says there are 10 sections to our homepage, which we'll design top to bottom. However, it's important to adjust the primary and secondary colors first because we'll use those often. So to do that, let's go to Appearance, Customize, Style, Colors. Here we are in our dashboard. You can hover on Appearance and click Customize. Now we can click style and colors. And by default, Flatsum comes with a primary color, which is this dark blue, and a secondary color, which is orange, for stuff like the stars, and then some other colors like success and alert. And we just want to change the top two now and make use of those because they're different and they're bold. But for now, we can change the primary color, copy our primary color from the guide, and just click anywhere on this little color palette. Then double click on the hex and paste it over. Great job. And now our blue will get lighter. Perfect. Now let's click secondary color down here on the orange. Come back to the guide. Let's grab our secondary color hex. Copy. And paste it. If you click over here on the gray, it could actually change the color. So let's just click Save and Publish right now. All right, and let's X out. Great job. Now we can come down and we're going to start working on the slider. All right. I'm going to show you where those colors came from as we work on the slider. So we'll scroll down and we'll see the slider on our homepage consists of four banners. That's, that number can be changed. Actually, you can make it as many banner slides as you want. We'll replace each banner and change the heights and text. Note you can also change the text and colors to the primary, secondary, and white colors, etc. So now that we've set those up, it'll be easy to use those colors. All right, so let's begin. Let's close our dashboard and let's just come to the home page and hover in the top nav and click edit page. So that's how we're going to edit the home page or any page. Just click edit page at the top. Now click UX Builder to get our super sleek visual editor. So as we saw before, the home page consists of the content on the left, stacked one on top of the other. We have our slider and then our row, and then below the row is a title. And as we go down the page, we can see that each individual section will highlight once we hover on the left. So of course the first section is the slider and to open this up on the left, you just need to click on the blue area over here. All right, I like doing that, I'm lazy and this opens up the perfect section just by saying, hey, that section, click on it. <clears throat> so let's follow the guide and let's see that the first thing is to change the layout height to 700 pixels. Let's do that, height. And you can just click over here near the six and delete and make it a seven. 
All right, and then let's come down. Now where it says background image, it's just the blue, and this is actually a blue image. So we wanna click change media. Now click select files. And it's time to upload some of our demo images. So we can open the make an online store folder at this point that we downloaded from the guide. And if you want, you can actually just hit command A and upload every image and then make the entire demo site. And that way you don't have to do any uploading later. But because you might have some of your own images, we're just gonna do it one by one in the tutorial. Up to you. So they're all labeled though. You wanna click name to sort them. And that way you can see that we have three slider images right here. And if you can't find them, you can also just search in the upper right or wherever your search bar is for the names. And I'll put the names of the images we want in the guide. For now, we can just grab slider image one and double click it. All right, and you've just uploaded your first image to WordPress. Good job on that. Now in the lower right, click use this image and we'll be using the image. So that's pretty cool. What's the guide say next? So it says, change size to original. So as you can see, the image is a little bit blurry here because WordPress is guessing that it should be size large. We wanna make that size original and keep your eye on the image. And we can see we increased the clarity a little bit right there. Great work. Now all we need to do is change the text and the text already has that really cool effect so I'm going to take us to my version of the demo site that I'm using to build here for you guys. And we can see the text already comes with that nice little spring in flip. And most importantly, we can copy what it says because I already planned that part of it. So let's come back to our UX builder and let's click on the cursive at the top and make it Spring into summer and dot, dot, dot. So notice how I edited the text in between the two brackets. That's something you should get used to doing in WordPress because WordPress will write these little styles for you and you don't want to mess with those. You only want to change the text. Of course, you could also click open text editor and get a prettier screen. And click OK. All right, let's go back and we can click on our main headline and bring up that section in the editor. Now to make it easy for you in our guide, I've actually put in the exact piece of HTML that you need. So just highlight the text of banner one and paste it in. Highlight like I'm doing right here, right click, copy, and then come back. And this will help you just get the exact uh, style of the demo because I actually changed up some of the H's to make them larger or smaller, and some of the colors as well. So this will help everyone just stay on the same page, paste it in, and see our changes. Pretty cool. And then once you do that, it's really easy to go in and edit, like, you know, maybe you want to say you get money back instead of cash. So that's really easy. If you do end up deleting one of the tags, like strong or span, just hit Command Z and you'll be in good shape. All right, we need to change those colors and we need to change those buttons now. So let's update the learn more and the shop. And we wanna use the demo content as much as possible so that we can make our website quickly. And also Flatsum did a tremendous job with the demo and thought through the user experience for us already. So we wanna use that. So what we can do now is just click on one of these buttons like men and click on the gear and then delete it. Okay. And now for shop women, we can change that one to learn more. So let's click shop women. You'll get the button text, which is really easy to change as long as my mouse doesn't die. So we'll just write in learn more, which is set to auto caps for us. Perfect. And then we'll click shop all and change that to just shop. To change the button colors, it's a lot easier than you might think. We can just click on one of them, like learn more. And then in the button styles on the left, scroll down to color and choose secondary because we want that nice bright pink. And we'll leave this button style on outline. Now we can click shop and change that button color to secondary, but we'll change the style to 
default. And that'll give us that contrast between the two buttons so that maybe someone will like clicking the learn more or the shop more, depending on how the buttons feel to them. All right, now let's simply apply and update. And you've created your very first image slider banner in Flatsum's UX Builder. Strong work. So let's move to the next banner by just clicking the right arrow in our editor. All right, we can see this one needs to be changed up, so let's click on the blue. All right, and the first step, if you remember, is just to change the height. And now we can easily upload an image, but this one actually is a video banner right now. So we're gonna save this one to the last slider, and then I'll show you how to insert a video. Let's continue now though with two more images so that everyone gets the hang of this. And we can in fact go back and see that we're on this uh, banner. We're just gonna drag it to the bottom because that one is gonna be the last one for a video. So we need to change these other two, and our first one looks phenomenal. All right, so click on the second banner click on the blue to open up your editor on the left, change the height, click on the change media in background, upload files, select files, and we can easily grab our, hope that stays bigger for us, slider image two and double click. So now that these images are on your WordPress site, you can use them in blog posts, pages, sliders, wherever you want. Just make sure it's checked and use this image. All right, perfect. Now we wanna change the size to original. Excellent. And we'll see what the next step in the guide is. And that's to change the text for banner two. But before we do that, I want to tell you that I made this image collage in PicMonkey.com. So we're going to use PicMonkey in a second, but just a heads up that PicMonkey.com is my recommended developer tool to edit images for the web. It's not totally free. I think they have a free trial version and I actually pay for the upgraded version, like one step up so you get more features. But the way you can do it really easily is just click something like collage. And then it's really easy to choose the layout. Just click here. And what I did for this image was I clicked ducks in a row and chose the five option. And then you can just like create your own by uploading images. You click on the image tab, add images, and then pull them in and drag them once they're on PicMonkey like this. just so you know about this helpful tool. All right, but we've already made our image slider, so we're good to go. Made our collage, rather. And we can change our text again just by clicking on the right place right here on top of our UX Builder. So this whole chunk of text is sitting in one text editor, and I've updated the entire thing for you. All you need to do is grab the text for banner two. So highlight, copy, Come back and then highlight, paste. Great job. If you have a background that's dark and text that's dark, you might want to change the color of the text. To change your text color, just click Open Text Editor, highlight the portion of text you want to work with, click on this toggle toolbar button, and then on the A, click on the drop down and then choose custom. And you can drag the color wherever you want like this. And in the upper left, far upper left, it's gonna be all white. So let's click okay. And okay, great job. Now apply and that feels good to update. Let's change our button now. And we want this to be browse products. So just click on the button anywhere. And now browse products. And we can change the uh, hover color so we're gonna keep the color primary. Now we can make it a solid blue by clicking Style, Default. That feels good. 
Let's apply and update. All right, now that our walk through Paradise, Brooklyn to Bay Area slide is complete, let's keep moving because I think we're getting the hang of it. To get to the next banner, we can also click on our little stack of banner pancakes up here on the left. And then let's proceed and edit this slider. So let's click on the blue area, anywhere on the blue. And let's change our layout height to 700. Now in background, change media. Upload files, select files. Sorry guys, my kittens decide to wrestle pretty much every time I turn on the microphone. And now we're gonna choose, make our screen bigger, we're gonna choose our slider image three. All right, so double click that and click use this image. So this one is really pretty and I got this image from pixabay.com a website uh, repository we've seen in past tutorials. That's just pixabay.com. And you can see that this is just another image I got there. So Pixabay is free to use and um, you can get your free downloads. You just need to set up a uh, free account with them and log in. And you can definitely donate to them too if you choose. That's a great idea I recommend. All right, so I won't walk through exactly where the image came from because we want to keep building. Let's change our size to original, which will make our image more clear, a lot more clear. And now let's see how our site on the demo looked. So we can see we have an interesting little problem here, which is that the sunset uh, creates a bright background, so our text doesn't look as good. On the demo, what I did was I moved the text to the left, but we could also take the image and flip it so the sunset's on the left. Let's try to do that because that sounds like a little more fun. So what we can do is just click apply and update and leave this section as it is. And now let's open up our site in a new window, which is always going to be makeawordpresswebsite.com for your reference. Click to the dashboard. Now we can click media where that image we just uploaded will live. Find it right here. Just click the image to open it. And now to flip the image, we're going to click edit. And to do the image flip, just click on this right left arrow right here at the top. Perfect. Now let's save it. Great job. And we can X out and close our media window. We can also get rid of these notifications at the top. That's pretty annoying. Let's click plugins. And it looks like those are all from Stripe. Stripe is being super needy. So let's deactivate the Stripe gateway. That's what they get. All right, and now those notifications should be all gone. Congratulations. Okay, close that window. And now let's come back to our UX builder. And let's just refresh the page. Let's see if our image flipped. Let's click on the arrows to get to the right slide. And it took a second to load up the image, but the image did flip. So that just shows you that when you make changes to your WordPress in a different window and update them, then they'll be reflected on the different window or the different browser tab you are working. You just have to make sure you save your current changes that you're working on and then refresh the page. And WordPress will always ask you like, are you sure you want to refresh? You have you know, some edits to make to save. All right, great job. Now we can change our text easily. Just go back to the guide and scroll down. The text for banner three is right here. Just highlight it and copy. And now let's come back to our UX Builder, click on the text. I'm going to hit Command A and Command V to save a little time. And perfect. Let's change up our button now to, which needs to say, Shop Now. So what we're doing is giving people a lot of different ways to get to our shop. It's important not to just have one button, but to have many buttons. 
let's change browse products to shop now and let's change the color to secondary and we're good to go so these buttons also need links which we forgot to set up on the previous slides and you can easily get the right link just by clicking on the screen right here in our editor in fact so if you look in the lower left of my screen when I hover on our products you'll see the link right here by this discard button so that one is the shop and the deals and the blog and for most of these we just want to right click and copy the link address for our shop which is our products because we called it that now you can click on the shop button and scroll down to link and just paste in that link so it's really easy to use the work that's already in front of us and already completed now we can go back on the slider alright and we can set that shop button right here click on the button scroll down and change the link so once we copied it it'll still be copied and we can paste it as many times as we want and we're gonna leave our video as it is and change the shop right here on our walk through paradise slide scroll down and paste the link alright so I think you get the picture pretty simple we needed to change one more button which was the learn more and that's just gonna go to our deals so we can right click copy that link address click learn more scroll down remove this little hashtag which is just a placeholder and paste and now make sure to apply and always update to save your changes and now when we go back to our site and see what we made at makeawordpresswebsite.com you can see we have a beautiful image slider with one slide two slides three slides a video which we're gonna change up next and all those effects like the text flip and the textiles are set up already for us by Flatsum so huge thanks to them and our buttons work. So as we can see on our demo site, the video slider spans the middle of the page, which I think looks pretty good, but I'm also gonna show you how to make a full screen video slider. So let's do that right now. We can go back to our visual editor, our UX builder, and in our pancake stack on the left, open up slider, and then click to the last banner where we put the video slide. All right, and now this is pretty simple. We just need to click on the blue again. And it'll open up our banner settings. And now scroll all the way down to the video section and make sure it's opened up like mine is. And then we can use a YouTube or a video MP4, or you might have the other options, but I like the first two the most. So we're gonna get just a YouTube uh, ID. It says add a YouTube ID here, for example, not sure what that would be, but I have one of them on our blog post guide. It says for the demo, we used this one. So to test it out or to use it, we can just copy what's in the quotation marks. Don't copy the quotation marks themselves. And now back in the UX builder, just paste that in the box for YouTube. So you don't need to put in the full YouTube link or the embed link or anything like that. Just the video YouTube ID here and then click apply and it won't show up in the UX builder. But once we click update and we check out our site, we can scroll through and see we now have in. Okay, it doesn't wanna play yet, what's going on? Refresh. Scroll down now again, and we can see the problem we had was that leaving the UX Builder open, I left it open overnight, that caused it to get delayed and it didn't see our changes. So just a reminder that we should refresh our page, and if you're working in the UX Builder for a long period of time, just go ahead and close your web browser, then log back into WordPress and make sure to save your changes first, and then just that'll refresh everything. So we're gonna paste in that video ID one more time, Click apply, update, and now our banner pancake with the video is in the last position, perfect. Just gonna refresh, and voila, you've created a beautiful video image slider.
All right, so finally it's working. To make our video slider full screen, we wanna go back to the pancake and open up the settings. We can click the gear and click options to get there as well. And then you just wanna to come to height and choose 16 by nine. So if you choose 16 by nine, it's gonna to go to the full screen. And I think the other heights might work as well, but 16 to nine is the best. Click apply and update. And now when we refresh the site, let's get to our video slider. There we go. We just had to refresh it again. And now you have made a full screen video slider. This will work with any video from YouTube. If you want to get that slider in the perfect height, so if you want to really control how tall it is, um, what I recommend doing and what the Flatsome developers recommend doing is creating your own MP4. So you could just take a video on your phone and upload it to your computer and it will be an MP4. And then you can edit it in whatever free video editing software you like or however you like editing a video. And then just upload it to WordPress. And once your video is uploaded to WordPress, you can come back to the image slider pancake right here, get to the banner settings, and you can just paste the link to that MP4 in video MP4. All right, so that's how you would take a video on your phone and upload it to your computer. Then you can upload it to WordPress and WordPress will give you a link to the file. You can just paste that in right here to use your own hosted video, they call it. So that's what they did in the Flatsome demo but that's a little bit too much of a process for us to look at right now. I just wanted to show you how to create a full screen video slider and also how to create the YouTube video slider. All right, so great job. We're gonna change that height back to just 700 pixels so that the height will match our other slides, our other banners, and click apply and update. Great job. All right, so now that we've created our beautiful image slider, we can scroll down and we're gonna set up our mission boxes, which go right beneath the image slider. All right, so we can proceed and our blog post guide will tell us exactly what to do for those mission boxes. Add title, change our text to this, get icons from Logo Maker. Those will already be in your images folder that we downloaded. Make sure height is 100, create credits and add credits from the icons, which I'll give you. And then you can find all the text to easily copy on the site we're making right now. So perfect. Sorry about the screen size change, by the way. I jumped over to my air because I flew to Austin right now where I'm gonna go visit HostGator.com, HostGator itself, in about 15 minutes. All right, so I'm really excited and I'm also really nervous if you've ever had one of those moments where it's like both of those feelings. Um, and I can't wait to tell you guys about it and see what is the company behind the platform you know that we all use and figure out what is HostGator. So I'll tell you guys all about that. I'll take as many pictures as I can um, before they kick me out and I'm just doing some building here with you guys now so we can get our website done and because it's one of the things that calms me down. All right, so I've already set up a couple of the mission boxes in our UX builder. Um, I did that just to get the ball rolling. Uh, but all you have to do is come to your pancake area and drag a title up to the section right beneath the slider pancake, like that. And then you need to bring this row, which contains the text and the borders, and that'll be a little bit further down. So we can see that that row is like further down the page. This one right here. You just need to drag it up. So what I did was it was down here, and I just dragged it up beneath the title. And then once it's there, it's really simple. You can just click the arrow to open it, and to make the rows skinnier, if you want four across like we do, or five across, you can just click on the gear, click options, and then change the width to whatever you want. So you can have some like really fat or skinny, but ours are just all three out of 12. So there's four of them, each is one fourth. And then we clicked um, in the row, we clicked add to row to get this other column. And you'll see that when we click the gear and then click options, we can click three and it'll just jump right in line. Perfect. Let's click apply and update. All right, so pretty cool. 
we've gotten all of our text from our demo site, like you guys can at makeawordpresswebsite.com. Mine is just from startawordpresswebsite.com where I built the first version of the site. All right, so we'll get our last section of text and show you how to set up this mission box. Just copy from the demo site, come back to the UX builder, and we're gonna find out what we need in the column here, which is an icon box. So let's click add elements and we can just search for icon. Perfect, click icon box and we'll get the right thing. All right, so we're all set up. We just need to um, go ahead and click back and I'm actually gonna copy the settings from one of the icon boxes into this new one. So you can open up the third column gear, copy options, then on the icon box we just made, gear and paste options. And that'll make them look the same. All right, and we're gonna add those icons. Let's first paste in our text. So click on the text and then just paste her in there. All right, great job. Next, we need our titles from the demo set. So let's come back and copy the first title, which is making a website on a budget, and come back in and paste it. And we can see that the titles of the mission boxes are actually within the icon box. They're not in the text box. So we're using this title section. And paste. And back to the demo site, and copy. And click on the icon box at the top, and then paste. All right, so you get the picture. Copy the title and come back. And paste. And for our new icon box that we created, we're going to delete the header three in the text editor. So it's just the text, click apply. And now we can open up the icon box itself. Click on its gear options. And we're gonna give this one a title, which is the truest understanding. All right, so title and paste. Great job. Now it's time to add icons and we have three placeholders and one that needs a full icon. All right. So let's click on our first icon. Just click remove. And you don't even have to do that. You can just click change media. But because I did, we're gonna click select media. Select files and open up our make an online store folder. And you should have the icons. I'll go ahead and rename those as icon first so you can sort all of them. But we just wanna grab the money icon first. Click use this image. Great, now click on the second icon box, change media, upload files, select files. We can do a search for icon in the top right and it'll grab us all of our icons from the last seven days, which we want. So I'm gonna select customer service, hands and heart and WordPress and upload. So we can do that all at once and save some time. All right, so this one is gonna be the little customer service guy with his beanie on, helping all, the, helping all of us out. So choose him and click use this image. Now click on the third icon, change media and WordPress icon, use this image. All right, and I'm pretty sure that's the wordpress.org icon, not to be confused with wordpress.com. Now click on the fourth icon box, for this one, we need to click on the gear because we don't have that sample icon set up. So click on the gear, click options. Now select media and harden hands. Perfect, use this image. And now our mission box is perfect and we're done with that. Great job. Click apply and update as always. All right, you guys, I'm gonna go head off and see HostGator. Wish me luck uh, from the future and I'll let you know how it goes, all right? I think it's going to be a lot of fun. All right, great job, everyone. I'm back from my meeting with HostGator, and I got to meet Snappy himself. 
The meeting was awesome. They have a really cool office and check out all our social media channels to learn more about that experience. But I can say for now that they're a really fantastic company that we want to be a part of in the future. They're doing some amazing things and my head is spinning with all the ideas I have for new content for you guys. So check out the social media channels um, for pictures of stuff like Snappy and a little bit more of what it looks like over there. So now we're gonna dive into the core e-commerce part of your site, which are the products. We're gonna add a few products and put them on the homepage. You're gonna see in the guide that the steps are really easy to add products. It's a lot like making a new post or a page, except for it gets a price. So we can actually just scroll down and jump right in. Let's go to the browse new arrivals section, which are our new product arrivals. All right, so we're gonna get to browse new arrivals and we can see that we have our directions. So let's do it. In our UX builder, we're gonna actually drag these featured boxes down. So let's close that row and drag this row slash pancake down underneath products. Great job. And now we'll have a products area, which are gonna be the demo products Flatsum came with. So you can either replace this information with your own content or you can just delete them. And I'm gonna delete them so that we can start fresh. But if you wanna be really lazy and just replace them, or if you actually like these products, then go ahead and keep them. All right, so this section is first called Browse New Arrivals. That's really easy, just click on the title. Now change it up. And let's click Apply and Update. All right, so now it's time to start creating e-commerce. All right, let's go to our dashboard. So let's open the site in a new tab and click to the dashboard. And because we already installed our WooCommerce free e-commerce plugin, we have products on the left side right here. So click products and you'll right away see all the demo products we got. So you have like the Osaka Entry T Super Dry and you can check out the basic settings that it came with if you want. You have a description at the top where you can write any sort of content just like you would in Microsoft Word and style it with colors or links or bullet points. Your product categories, you of course have the title at the top right here. That's what the product is called. And then down below we have our product data. And this one's just a simple product with one price. So we'll get more into that. If you wanna make like different sizes, you're gonna set up a variable, pro variable product. It's got some tags, another description and the product image is just this blue person. All right, so let's look at how to make a new product. Click back to products. And so these are all out of our way. I'm just gonna bulk delete them. We can just click in the upper left box right here. Bulk actions, move to trash and apply. And then let's do that again. Upper left checkbox, bulk actions, move to trash, apply. Upper left checkbox, bulk actions, move to trash, and that should do it. So there's no particular order we need to add our products because we can control wherever they go on the site uh, whenever you add them. But for now, let's just click add product and create one that we like. All right, so I'm gonna jump over to the demo site and let's see, maybe we wanna create the captain. That's a really fun product. So let's do that first. So this is a t-shirt called the captain. And now that we've set up our title, we can get a description. And I'm just gonna open it up on the demo site and grab our description from here. All right, so we have this top right description, I'll copy it. And that actually goes below the product down here in product short description, fun fact. And then we have a longer description right here next to reviews. So we can copy all of that. And that goes in our, our main text area where you'd write a blog post or a page normally. 
and paste. Perfect. Now this product needs a price. So it's going to be 4450. All of our products are 50 cents. So you might have your own pricing style or strategy, but in my case I've found that 50 cents makes people buy more than 95 cents or 99 cents for example. If you want the product to be on sale, just write in a lower price right here. Pretty simple, obviously a lot we're gonna see as we move forward, but because we're just learning products, let's keep it simple. Simple is everything. So we need a product category, and there's some uh, demo ones already, perfect. Men and t-shirts are great. And then we need the images, which is the most important part. Whenever you shop online, of course, if it's a good image, you'll look into it. If it's not good, even if it's a good product, you're gone. So let's click set product image, upload files, and let's get some of those super fun, engaging product photos from our demo product folder. So select files. All right, and we're already in the right folder and make an online store 2017. I'm gonna sort by big photo. And then we can just get all of our captain stuff. So I'm just gonna drag and highlight and click open. And when we do that, we'll upload all six photos. Notice how they're fun, they're people photos, they're outdoors. It can make a big difference to set the mood and position yourself as fun and bold and different. Um, even if it's just a simple product like a t-shirt, it can make a big difference for your profitability. So once they upload, we can just choose one image for the featured image. All right, WordPress is going pretty quick right now. And we'll just choose this guy winking right here and set product image. We can put the other images in the product gallery. So let's click add product gallery images. And now you can just check off several images. So I'm gonna hold command and we can see the check mark. We'll go to more images now. So we'll grab five of them or as many as you like and click add to gallery. All right, guys, you're almost done. We just wanna give this product a tag and I'm gonna call it featured because we're gonna put the featured products on the homepage, but you can call it like cool or favorite or something as long as you can remember it. Good for organization. Click add. And now let's click publish. All right, and now when we visit our site, we can just type in the domain name without the WordPress login. We should see that we have our first product and it's already on the home page. All right, so there you have it. Great job. Our first product is now live. People can click it and read more and they can already in fact click add to cart and they can do more like post reviews and stuff like that. Four stars, great design, but I'm a, only the skipper. And click submit. All right, and that way people can review your products and be fun or cool or clever. And uh, it'll build social proof and get you more sales, hopefully, as Amazon has shown everyone. You may listen to this network with assurance that all sources of news will be properly labeled.